Hi, I'm Mike Coleman, a developer advocate at Google Cloud. Many years back, my friend Keith and I were replacing a blown head gasket on my car. I went to remove a bolt with an adjustable wrench and Keith stopped me cold in my tracks. He then said something that has stuck with me ever since. Always use the right tool for the job as he handed me an appropriately sized box wrench. We are seeing this advice play out today in the way organizations are leveraging the cloud. They are choosing different cloud providers for different workloads based on a variety of factors in an effort to ensure they're using the right tool for the job at hand. However, using multiple cloud providers comes with added complexity in the form of multiple management interfaces, disparate policy enforcement, and complex security implications. In this video, I want to talk a bit about how Anthos can help reduce the complexity around multi-cloud Kubernetes deployments with a very specific focus on Microsoft's Azure. Before we move into Anthos on Azure, let's talk about Anthos in more general terms. Anthos provides a unified platform for managing Kubernetes clusters across different clouds as well as on-prem. These clusters can be running inside of virtual machines and instances, as well as on bare metal. Anthos is comprised of an integrated set of services developed to ensure the entire IT organization, operators, developers, security teams can accomplish their duties without a siloed approach. Anthos is made up of several different components, such as container management. Anthos provides a reliable and efficient way to deploy and run containers. Service management. Anthos features a managed service mesh offering to connect, manage, and secure VMs and containers. Policy management. Anthos config management provides a central place to manage configuration and security policies across your entire fleet. Operations management. Anthos is integrated with cloud logging and cloud monitoring to provide an integrated logging and monitoring service for containers, services, and application. Specific to multi-cloud, Anthos allows you to manage clusters on Google Cloud, AWS, and Azure. Now let's dive a little deeper into Anthos on Azure. When you deploy an Anthos on Azure cluster, you end up running a compliant Kubernetes cluster on Azure native resources. This cluster can be accessed via the Cloud Console, G Cloud Command Line, or kubectl, just like any other Kubernetes cluster. Additionally, as we'll see in the demo later, the cluster will show up alongside clusters provisioned in other environments, such as Google Cloud, AWS, or bare metal inside of the Google Cloud Console. The Anthos on Azure architecture is comprised of several components. The first is a multi-cloud cluster API. This is a standard Google Cloud REST API, which provides cluster CRUD operations. Several Azure specific parameters are passed, such as the subscription ID, the VNet ID, and the subnet ID, along with parameters for the cluster size and configuration. Next, we have the multi-cloud cluster controller. When a cluster is created using the Anthos multi-cloud API, a long running operation is created with the Google cloud-based cluster controller. This controller will create the cluster in Azure asynchronously. You can check the status of the cluster operation via a get cluster call to the API. Next, we have Anthos service account. Once the Anthos multi-cloud API is enabled on your Google Cloud project, a Google managed service account will be automatically created within your project. This service account will be the security principal calling the Azure APIs. Additionally, we have the Anthos app registration. In order for the cluster controller to create Azure resources within your subscription using the Anthos service account, an Azure application registration must be created within the Azure Active Directory. Finally, there's the Connect API. In order to integrate into the Google Cloud Console, a Connect agent running on the cluster makes an outbound TLS call to the Connect API. In any cloud environment, there are multiple different types of resources. Deploying Anthos is no different. However, because Anthos automates the lifecycle of the cluster, some resources are managed by Anthos while others are managed by you. Well, now that you have an understanding of how Anthos on Azure clusters are built and managed, let's take a look at a quick demo to give you a first-hand look at how it all comes together. The first thing I'm going to do is create what we're calling a client, which is a set of credentials that we can use to operate against our Azure resources. So I've created that client. Now I'm going to go ahead and export the certificate. 
I'm going to take that certificate and I'm going to upload it into Azure. So let's move into the Azure console and I'll come over here and I'll click on certificates and secrets and then I'll do upload certificate and I'll choose that certificate that we just created. Come down here, I'll click the add button and I now have that certificate uploaded and I can authenticate against those Azure resources. Now let's go ahead and create our control plane cluster. You'll notice here that I'm actually specifying things like the Azure subnet ID, the uh, VM size that's specific to Azure. So a bunch of Azure specific parameters. After a few minutes, that cluster will be created. So let's wait for it to finish. There it is. So we've got the control plane up and running. Now let's go ahead and add the node pool. So a lot like the last command, when we issue this, we'll put in some Azure specific parameters to create that node pool. So we'll give that a couple of minutes, fast forward the video, and that node pool will be created as well. Now, if we move up to the Azure console, we can actually see all those resources we just created using G Cloud. So using the Google command line, we were able to go in and provision things like NICs and VMs, uh, IP addresses, load balancers, all of those Azure resources. Now, if we want the cluster to show up in Google Cloud, we need to do uh, create a hub membership. So we'll create the hub membership and we'll install the connect agent on that cluster and that will allow it to show back up in the Google Cloud console. So if I move over there, there's our cluster. So if I click on the name, you can get details about the cluster. Um, we can go up and we can click on the nodes. We can explore the details there. Uh, and again, these are the same uh, VMs that we saw running in the Azure console. And if I come up to storage, you can actually even see the names of those disks and you can see like disk.csi.azure.com and those are Azure resources. Now I don't have any workloads running, just that connect agent I installed earlier. So let me do a quick uh, deployment of a microservices demo. So we'll do the Kubernetes deployment YAML here, create a bunch of services, we'll move back, we'll refresh our workloads. Notice how we're using the Google Cloud console to look at the workloads running up and Azure. So that's that single pane of glass. So um, they're not all running yet. Refresh, give it a second and everything's up and running. Now, if I move over here and I click on the left on services and ingress, I can find the IP address of the Azure based load balancer and I can click on that and we'll see our application running. So we'll click here. There's the application running on Kubernetes deployed from Google Cloud into Azure. Well, there you have it. That's Anthos on Azure. For additional information, check out the links below and don't forget to like and subscribe to be alerted when we create fresh new content.